So now we want to look at how discrete probability distributions get graphed. And they're similar to a relative frequency histogram, but since they're discrete, the graph is drawn with vertical lines. And you can kind of see it down here. It's a little strange, but each of these bars represents one of these groups. As a matter of fact, let's look at this example. So this is about the NBA Finals. So the NBA Finals is a best of seven series. The following table shows the number of games that have been played in every NBA Finals from 1947 to 2022. Okay, best of seven means that the first team to get to the most out of seven, in other words, the first team to get to four games, wins. All right, so these are the number of games that it could take to win. It could take you four games to win, which is called a sweep when you, you know, win all four games and you're done. And then five, which means the winner got four games and the loser got one game. Six, which would be the winner got four and the loser got two. And then seven, the winner got four and the loser got three. All right, so let's remind ourselves how to find these probabilities. So we're going to construct a probability distribution of the data. Well, okay, we've learned how to do this before, but the probabilities here would be the relative frequencies. We learned how to do this back in section 5.1. We're going to have to find the total down here. I mean, to be fair, we learned how to do this in chapter 2. We just weren't connecting that it was a probability at the time. All right, so I pulled up Desmos, and I want to add 9 plus 18 plus 30 plus 19, and I get a total of 76. So that's going to be the sum that I'm going to put down here, which is 76. All right, now I want to find those relative frequencies, and I want three decimal places, you'll notice. Right here, three decimal places. Okay, so I'm going to take 9 and divide it by 76. I'm going to get a decimal. And I'm going to do the same thing with the next number and the next number. So 9 divided by 76, 18 divided by 76, 30 divided by 76, and 19 divided by 76. And there we have the values. So 0 0.118, 0 0.237, 0 0.238, 0.25. Right. And the last one isn't even rounded. <laughs> it just is. So, and that's fine. You don't have to show the fractions unless you want to. I mean, I show the first one because I want to remind everybody how to do it. But, you know, you don't actually have to show the fractions if you don't want to. All right. Now, what is the sum of these values? We should double check that just to make sure it makes sense. So 0 0.118 plus 0.237 plus 0.395 plus 0.25 makes 1. So that's the sum, which is great. That's what we wanted it to be. It's the sum of those probabilities. All right. Now, what type of probabilities are we finding here? When did we learn this? Well, we learned this in section 5.1. These are empirical probabilities because they're from data. I didn't ask why, but just a reminder. When you have you know, records and data, then that's empirical probability. It's not classical. Classical is things like cards and dice. Right? Now, why is this probability distribution considered discrete? Okay. Well, for the discrete part, you have to look at the x-axis and think about what this is, right? The, the value over here, the x in other words. So the random variable x is the number of games played. And that can't be a decimal, right? You can't play half of a game. <laughs> Right? So this NBA Finals is either five games or it's six, but it's not going to be 5.232, right? The number of games are whole numbers. So the random variable x, which is the number of games, I guess I should say is a whole number. Or are whole numbers? I'll just say are whole numbers. You cannot have... 5.23614 games in an NBA final. It doesn't work like that, right? So that's the key, right? It can't be decimals, right? That's the difference between discrete and continuous. 
All right, now let's look at this graph here. So this is a graph drawn by computer, but it's of this distribution. So you can see 118 is the height of that bar, right? And then 237 is the height of that bar, right? So I could even write that in here. This is 0 0.237. This is 0 0.118. This one over here is 0 0.395. And you can see it's almost at 0.4, the top of the graph. And this one's 0 0.25. So the heights of the bars add up to 1. Now, it didn't, I didn't add in the labels, but I can. Down here is the number of games. Right? This is your x, right? your x variable, which is right here. The x becomes the x-axis. It's the number of games. It's your random variable. And then over here is your probability. Or in other words, your relative frequency, tomato, tomato, right? So they're the same thing in this case, or close enough. All right, now we're going to describe the shape of this distribution. Well, it's actually a little bit skewed left. There's a little bit of a tail over here, so skewed left. All right, what is the probability a random NBA Finals does not take exactly five games? Oh, now we're challenging ourselves. We've got to remember our rules from Chapter 5. So we want it to not take exactly five games. Okay, so I want the probability of not five. That's 1 minus the probability of five, which is 1 minus, and the probability of five was 0.237. So this is 0.763, if I'm not mistaken, but I'll double check myself in Desmos. I'm going to get rid of all these. 1 minus 0.237. Yep, it is indeed 0.763. And by the way, in case you're wondering, um, I'm using the complement rule. I'm using rule number 3 for that one because it was the complement, because it's a not problem. All right, what is the probability a random NBA Finals takes at least six games? Well, at least six means six or seven games, right? Those are our only options that are at least six. So I've, what I'm really asking is, what's the probability of six or seven? Either one of those would be at least six, and that's an or, and they're disjoint, right? You either play six games or you play seven games in the NBA Finals, right? So notice these are, I'm going to have to add that in. Six or seven games is disjoint, or are disjoint, are disjoint. Because you can either play six games or seven games, right? You can't do both. Now, why do I figure that out? Why do I care that it's disjoint? Well, because I know that if it's disjoint, then I can use the rule that says I can just add, right? If they're disjoint, I can just find the probability of six games plus the probability of seven games, and I'm done, which they are. So that's rule number one. So I'm using rule number one right here. So I figured out in my head that they're disjoint, so I take the probability of six plus the probability of seven, which is... Uh, 0 0.395 plus 0 0.25, and we'll go grab Desmos and find what that is. Oops, it doesn't help if you don't put your decimal point in there. Plus 0 0.25, and I get 0 0.645. There we go. All right, now, I notice this is saying, so this was a random, so it had to be rule one, two, or three, right, because it's a single game, whereas down here, it's talking about three games, right, with replacement. Uh, that's rule number four, right, this is going to be, um, unless there's an at least one phrase in here, which there isn't, so this is rule number four, right, that's multiplication rule, these are independent. 
as opposed to up here where it was disjoint. All right, so this is independent because, of course, one NBA Finals taking five games has no effect on the next NBA Finals taking six games. I mean, they have no relevancy to each other because they're selected it with replacement even. All right, so what's the probability that all of them, that word, took exactly six games? So I want the probability of all took six games. Well, that's the probability that the first one is six games times the probability of the second one being six games times the probability of the third one being six games. And six games was 0.395. So I'm taking 0.395 times 0.395 times 0.395 which of course is 0.395 to the third power, which is, I don't know what it is, but I will find out. Zero point three nine five, and then I shift six to get the um, carrot, and then I hit three because there were three games. So it's zero point zero six one six zero point zero six two right there so that was a little review actually and you seeing oh those rules that we learned in chapter five for probability they still apply here in chapter six we can still use them even if the probabilities are given to us kind of indirectly I didn't give you the probabilities. You found the probabilities, but then you're still able to use them in the same way that we could in Chapter 5. And if I didn't give you to them to you in the table, I could also have given them to you in a graph form here. If I give you this graph and give you the, where the bars are, you could have found all these same answers, right? because you know the probability of 4, 5, 6, and 7, as long as the numbers are given to you. But of course, a graph is kind of nicer than a table in some ways, because it also conveys that information in a visual way that a table just doesn't. So both of them are handy.